If you're not sure whether your body is ready to practice lotus pose yet, or if you're already practicing it, but you're experiencing pain or discomfort, then this video is for you. I'm gonna show you three little tests you can use to check if your body is ready for the pose. Plus, I'll show you what to do instead if it's not quite there yet. Are you excited? Then like this video, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel. Then you can click the bell to get notified whenever I post something new. Test number one, can you close your knee joint, AKA, can you bring your calf up to your thigh? To do this requires a little bit of um, length in the front of the thigh, in the hip flexor muscles. And so the reason it's important is because when you come in and out of Lotus, you want to keep this joint closed pretty much so that you're not tempted to twist the knee joint, which is one of the main sources of pain for people in this pose. If you find that movement of bringing the heel close difficult, then work on hero pose or virasana to get a bit more length in these muscles. So what you're gonna do is come onto your knees, take as many props as you need under your hips. So you might start quite high to begin with. And sit like this for five to 10 minutes each day to allow these muscles at the front of the thighs to lengthen. By the way, if you don't have a yoga block, then just get creative with a rolled up blanket or some cushions, whatever you can find to prop yourself up. And then as these muscles start to lengthen, you can lower the height of your prop until you feel that the heels are pretty much coming close to your bottom. Then you're ready to move on to the next test. Test number two, can your knee drop out all the way pretty much to the floor in this position? This is a function of how tight the muscles of these inner thigh, thighs are. You can imagine this muscle like an elastic band. If the elastic band is really tight, the knees are gonna be up here. And if the elastic band is stretched, then the knee's gonna drop down towards the floor. The most efficient pose to stretch these muscles is probably Baddha Konasana, this one. But I find that sitting here for five and 10 minutes isn't so efficient when it comes to lengthening these muscles. Check out this video on PIR, which is a stretching technique that will help you to open up these stubborn muscles a little bit more efficiently. Now, the knee doesn't have to be all the way down to the floor to be able to come in lotus pose, but to sit comfortably, you do need a good amount of hip external rotation for this to happen. It's worth pointing out here that the shape and the orientation of your hip joints can also impact how much external rotation in the hips you can achieve. So I'm lucky, I guess, in that sense, in that my hip joints face outwards. So I can achieve a greater range of external hip rotation than somebody whose hip joints were perhaps facing more forwards. But don't envy me because this has caused me problems in other areas of life. So just to say that while you can definitely increase the, around the range of hip rotation by stretching the tissues, if you start to come up against any sharp or pinching sensations, then that could be a sign of bone to bone compression. And you definitely don't wanna push through that kind of pain because you're not gonna change that anyway. It's the shape and the orientation of your joints. So just be very mindful, listen to your body and never push through sharp pain. And the third test that you can do is to check when you are in external rotation with the hip and your knee joint is flexed, can you bring the heel upwards, AKA lift the whole thigh and shin as one unit? That means can you draw it up without opening this joint? And I have found or I've noticed that this tends to be a function of how tight your external hip muscles are. So those are the muscles on the outside of the hip. And the best way for you to work on lengthening those, uh, those tissues is to cradle the shin and the knee with your arms like so. And here you can kind of rock from side to side like a baby like you're holding a baby in your arms. And gradually you can bring the shin closer and closer up towards your chest. Notice that the knee is held in position relative to the thigh bone because I'm holding the shin. And so the movement is only coming from the hip joint. Remember, we don't want it to come from the knee joint. So I'm flexing the hip, I'm bringing the thigh bone up towards my chest whilst I'm in this externally rotated position. 
I actually prefer to do this standing against the wall. So I'll show you that version quickly as well. So all I do is I take my ankle and my shin across the opposite thigh. I bend my knee and I kind of lean back into the wall just for balance. And then I can sit down and find the stretch in the outside of that hip. Should, it should feel quite good, quite uh, releasing. And you can stay here five to 10 breaths and then change sides. So let me know in the comment box, which one of these tests are you passing and failing? Remember, test number one, can you close your knee joint? Step, test number two, can you open your hip joint with the knee pretty much close down to the floor? And test number three, can you flex your hip joint? Can you lift the thigh bone up without opening the knee? And if you'd like to see a little yoga flow with all of these different movements incorporated into it, then just let me know. You could type Lotus Flow in the comments and that way I know that you're interested. And honestly, if you have any questions about Lotus Pose, then I'm here for you. Please just type them in the comments below and you know that you'll get a response from me. Think of me as your private YouTube yoga instructor. Okay, thanks again for watching everyone. Give this video a like, a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell to get notified whenever I post a new video. Thanks again and I'll see you soon.